Hi guys, I'm back. Okay, so today I had some free time and I decided, let me just raise this volume. I decided to do a video today. I'm going to make two videos today. Hopefully these videos are short and I don't think anyone's home because I decided to do this four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, anyway, so today I, I decided to mix up my channel a little bit and I'm going to discuss things that I think it's not like social, social issues or like, um, news headlines. We have enough people out there discussing these things, but I think I'm going to discuss some things that I think is worthy of discussing and perhaps some things that I've been through or maybe you've been through that I think no one ever really sat down and discussed um, that I think, you know, should be discussed. Let me just say hi. Okay, so I know I picked a really bad time to make this video because it's in the afternoon and most people are probably out and about, but whatever, you know, you can always take a look at the video later on. Okay, so you're probably wondering about today, this subject, this topic. And, you know, I'm thinking about this whole Me Too movement and I'm thinking about um, how the Me Too movement is, you know, just um, tackling a lot of underlying issues that's going on. However, I think, do I think these things really occur? I wouldn't be in a mess if it didn't. Um, However, I think it's it's a lot more complicated than in some cases. I think it's a lot, it's far more complicated than um, in some instances than women just being taken advantage of. Do women get taken advantage of in this world? Absolutely. Do women get taken advantage of and overlooked in this world? Absolutely. Also, we also do have to factor in, and I know I'm going to hear it from, hi, thanks for joining me. And I know I'm going to hear it from the religious community, but some of the worst abuses that takes place that we don't even, we don't even discuss because they're considered outcasts is, you know, abuse done to homosexual people. Like me as a black person, I can always say, you know, I've been abused against this, this, this um, covert racism. I can always talk about like covert racism and people will listen and people will believe, but not too many people actually sit down and I'm not a homosexual. I do not think homosexuality is wrong. I was religious for a couple of years and religious doc doctrine says that it's wrong. I no longer hold those beliefs. I think they're antiquated. I think it's archaic and I think it's wrong. Um, Two consenting adults over the age of 21, I think 21 is, 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 is a good age, have the right to make their own decisions as to their sexual preferences with another adult. And no one has the right to tell them their love is wrong between two adults over 21, okay? But that's not the topic. The topic today is what I call high tea burger. High tea burger. Uh, the topic today is called Pom Pom Promotions and Penile Power. And I know you guys are laughing and like, what the hell is this? Okay, what's Pom Pom Promotions? Okay, so we go back to the whole Me Too movement, right? And there's this outcry of women and one man. Um, and I'm not going to forget the one man. You know, hi, Harry. Uh, the outcry of women and one man talking about the abuse of power using sex. And I want to preface my position. I am not a me twist. Okay. I want to preface my position and I'm not against it. I want to preface my position by saying, hi, Harry. Thank you. Thank you. I want to preface my position by saying, um, that it's two ways. It's two ways. And here's what I'm going to say. It goes both ways for me. And this is something no one wants to talk about. The public does not speak about, and they refuse to speak about abuse of men. When men speak about being abused, they get laughed at. 
they get scorned, they get ridiculed as if men don't have feelings. And then when we deal with abuse done to men along the color coded barrier, because we do live, thank you, Harry, we do live in a color coded barrier. By that, I mean there is a color structure that guides society, okay? Meaning from the lightest to the darkest, from the fairest to the darkest, those things, right? We do live in a color-coded society. These things are facts, right? Um, we don't take into consideration that men also get abused. So that's one thing. The second thing that I think the Me Too movement is lacking, and I am not defending any man who's been um who's been who it has been alleged that there was abuse of power using sexual impropriety i'm not defending them i wasn't there all i'm saying is fair trial that's all i'm saying because as as a person who's been slandered the last thing you need is to be slandered and you don't get your story heard so let's go to Pum Pum Promotions. What is Pum Pum Promotions? And I want everyone to comment and tell me if they've seen this or experienced this at work, right? So, you know, you're working and, you know, you're doing your best and you're like, okay, you know, yeah, I'm going to get that raise or yeah, I'm going to get promoted. And someone uses their vagina to get your rightfully earned Promotion, pom pom promotions. This is something that's not being discussed in that Me Too campaign. How many women were willing to use the power of their pom pom to get a promotion? How many women played the game of using their pom pom for power? And I'm not saying this to be against women. I'm just saying it's a dynamic. Have I experienced this? Yes, I have. Have I seen it? Yes, I have. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I am not 100% conservative. We live in a very, it, it, look, we work with other human beings. I personally, I personally don't care if two consenting adults on the job, I don't care. If, you know, a woman uses her sexuality to get ahead, it's the world we live in. Men strategize. Men use strategies to get ahead. And I think if women recognize that their sexuality is a strategy and they can use it to get ahead, I'm like, use it. Now, here's where I this is where it impacted, this is where it impacted me and it became a problem for me. When I didn't want to play along, I ended up blacklisted. I ended up getting the shitty end of the stick. I ended up getting exactly, exactly, make, <laughs> make humanity great again, exactly. 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 But we're not talking about it. So that's why I was, I was thinking in my head and I was like, we got to talk about this. Right. It is a slippery slope. But let's let's think. All every day we get to hear about the world's richest people and all the world's richest people tell you who work 40 hours, sometimes 70 hours a week, that hard work will make you rich like them. That's garbage. We know the average working person are hard workers. And your hard work is not going to make you a billionaire like Jeff Bezos. No, it's strategy that's going to make you a billionaire. It's connections that's going to make you a billionaire. It's knowing what, it's knowing something that your competitors don't know. All that strategy right? What is that? What am I saying by this? I'm not against women who use their vagina or their pom pom as a strategy to get ahead. I'm not against it. 
But I am against it when your strategy backfires on you and then you claim sexual assault by the men. You see what I'm saying? I am against it when your strategy backfires on you and you don't get that promotion and then you ruin it for everyone else. You see what I'm saying? Men strategize in the business space. It's called workplace politics, right? People strategize all the time to get ahead. It's just a part of life. People are competitive. We live in a hyper-competitive world. We live in a hyper-competitive environment. Men have strategies in the workplace. Uh, presumably, much of, many of those strategies are very covert. They keep their strategies to themselves and they play their hand. You know, how do I get ahead? How do I get this raise? You think it's all, okay, I'm going to meet this quota and I'm going to get the raise at the end of the month. You meet this quota and 10 of you meet this quota. There has to be a strategy when all of you meet this quota or excel this quota that differentiates you from the other 10 people that you work with to get the raise and to get that position. It's strategy. Now, women, being that women in the West, we're not talking about like African women who've been working for like forever. Women in the West just started, literally just started working about 100 years ago. Okay, so men, men in the West have at least a 2,000 year head start because of Christianity and, and Islam and, and stuff like that. Islam a little bit, a little bit less, right? I think Islam is like 1,400 years and that kind of thing, right? So in the West, men have had a 2,000 year head start because much of the West was ruled by a very conservative type of Christianity where women's place was in the home barefoot, naked and pregnant. Right. So women going into the workplace, they have to strategize, too. And do women strategize like men? No. A woman, a woman may say, look, for me to compete in this environment, I have to use what women are synonymous for doing. Listen, the history of kings, when you read the history of kings, there's a saying and I'm going to mess up this saying and kill it. There's a saying where it says, you know, every great king, every great emperor, every great ruler has been brought down by a woman. I'm paraphrasing it now. Those of you who know the, 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 the um, those of you who know the, the, exact, the exact quote, quote it underneath because I know I probably butchered it, right? So we know that women are strategists. This is why women should be in the military. You know, women are very, very, very good at strategizing. And women in the workplace may not strategize to compete the same way as men. So more than likely, how is a woman going to compete in the workplace to get ahead? They're going to use the age-old power of the pom-pom. They're going to use the one thing they know that can tie a man's head up and make him not think straight. That is the power of the pom pom. It is what it is. Are you guys there? Is anyone? If anyone agrees, type amen. <laughs> if you agree, type amen. If you disagree, type no amens. Right? You see what I'm saying? So strategy. Let's see what we have here. What people have to realize: the glass ceiling, right? <laughs> you know, but let's be real, right? So the reason why I made this video, amen, exactly, you see? So the reason why I made this, I made this video is because it's something I experienced, you know? Another strategy that women use, okay? And women, you, you women in the workplace, I'm not downing any woman in the workplace or I'm not downing any woman in the Me Too movement or undermining their claims. I'm just making a point, a reference point to the, those claims, right? The second strategy that women use besides the power of the pom pom is that women, which is why women should always work in things like marketing and customer relations, is women have the amazing ability to communicate. It is like a literally like a two-fold sword. If you get on a woman's, if you get on a woman's good side, 
She will elevate you with her mouth and make you king and queen and supreme. But if you get on the opposite side of that woman's sword, which is her tongue, she will make you feel less than an ant. Okay, so that's another strategy that women use. So have you, have any of you experienced or seen or have been impacted by the power of a pom-pom promotion? What's a pom-pom promotion? You're at your job and you're busting your ass and you're like, yeah, I'm going to get this. You know, I'm going to get this promotion and this is my time. And you're putting in the work and, you know, you're getting recognized. You're getting recognized and you're like, and then in comes a pom pom promoter and she clears everything you do with the power of that pom pom and you just like you can't really <laughs> you can't really say anything you know you can't really like there's nothing you can really say what are you gonna do tell the upper bosses that she got the job using the, the power of a pom pom that's what i'm saying whether you experience whether it impacted you directly or whether you seen it and what was the fallout we're going there today let's talk right let's talk so you know and you're just like i've experienced it i'm not gonna call names i've experienced it and i'll tell you this <laughs> i've experienced it i'm not gonna call names because i don't think i don't think it's worthy of i personally if the pom pom if the power of your pom pom gets you where education cannot get you. I don't have a problem with it. My problem is it's when it backfires on you and you're like, I'm going to rip everything up for everyone. Or it backfires on you and you want to destroy me because you didn't get what you want. That's where I have a problem. Now, if it backfires on you and you re-strategize and you come back again and you, you, you know, you do your thing, I don't have a problem with that. Does it bother me that if I work hard, you work hard and I don't get it? Does it bother me? A lot. But that's life. But when you decide to destroy me as a result of it, then we have a problem. You see what I'm saying? So this is why I wanted to discuss the power of the pom pom. So I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to go into names, but I can tell you unequivocally. <laughs> you know, in, uh, in Dennis, in larger cities, I'm just laughing because it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, it's so, it's so like, um, make humanity great again. I like that name, by the way. It's so true that it's such a slippery slope. Okay, now, I was born in the Caribbean, okay? What's considered sexual harassment in the United States is flirting in the Caribbean, okay? Much of it. Sexual harassment in the Caribbean literally means rape. Like, you physically have to, like and then violate the person. That's sexual harassment. Flirting with someone is not sexual harassment. I don't know if it's if it's if it's changing now. You know, um cat calling women, you know, I'm from the Caribbean. You want to be cat well, not me. You know, because I'm just a person like when I don't want attention, I don't want attention. You know, but cat calling women in the Caribbean, it's 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 acceptable. Like you're a woman men must find you attractive, you know, and if a man doesn't find you attractive and no man is catcalling you, there is literally something wrong with you. Like, how can you be a woman and someone doesn't give you sweet talk? That's what it's called, like sweet talk, right? You're a woman and no one gives you sweet talk? There's something wrong with you. But in the United States, that's, it. you know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Or... Like um, you say no, and then the person begins to scheme, and you're like, God, you're like, 
you know, the person begins to scheme. So that's an issue. You know what I mean? So these are some of the things that um, that we experience, the difference, the difference between the Caribbean and the United States, right? So let's go back to Pom Pom Promotions, right? So what did I experience? Like, for example, you know, I worked with someone and I, I worked with someone. And were they the best at what they did? No. What they had was an incredible, as a woman, an incredible gift of gab. They could get very powerful people to eat out of their hands. But not just not just the gift of gab, this woman also knew how to look the look, walk the walk, and talk the talk. Like, literally. And never in a million years, I would think that this person, because I know that this person doesn't have the mental aptitude and the physical qualifications to have the position they have today. That person today is an ambassador. Did this person sleep their way to the top? Literally. Literally slept their way to the top. Hold on, give me a second. Right, exactly. There's a, you see, you see, this is the thing. There's no one way to define this thing, right? Because sexual harassment to you, T Burger, flirting is not sexual harassment. Catcalling is not sexual harassment, right? Telling a woman, you know, my God, you look good, is not sexual harassment. For me, that's not sexual harassment, you know. Um, but for some women, it is. For some women, if you if you look at them and you find them attractive, for some women it's sexual harassment. And you're like, seriously? But you gotta respect people's, you know, and this is what makes this issue so tricky. You know? Like, I'm like, you're a woman. You want a man or men to find you attractive right? But you don't want him to do grimy, dirty, creepy stuff. And you're like, huh? you see what I'm saying? That's the difference, right? So anyway, back to this woman. So today, this woman, today, she is an internationally, um, international speaker, works for the UN. I'll tell you the story about that. When I, when I left the UN, couldn't, couldn't spend me five years looking for, looking for work. Okay. As soon as I left the UN, the next thing you know, she's an ambassador. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? The power of the pom pom. Listen, man, I'm giving you, I'm giving you some secrets here. I'm giving you some keys here. Now, women don't hate me. I'm not gonna give out all the secrets, but I'm giving you some secrets here and some keys here. The power of the pom pom. And for those women who think that pom pom and a power, like power, like people in positions of power and the pom pom are not synonymous, get with it. Okay? Get with it. Get with it. This woman today is an international speaker, ran for president of her country. Okay, respected globally. Okay, all through the power of the pom pom. And here I am, certified up the wazoo. <laughs> and it's like, I get treated like shit every single day. Why? Because I refuse to play the pom-pom promotion game. You think it's a joke? Because I refuse to play the pom-pom promotion game. Now, has anyone in the chat room been through this? Wow, thank you. It's no joke, I'm here and I love, don't get me wrong, I love my job. I love my job. But I did not play the pom pom promotion game. And I'm here. And that person moves and shakes with the upper echelon.
weapons of power that runs this world. And I know that this person didn't get there because of their beauty. And when she was younger, she was a stunner. And she she knew one thing I liked about her, which I don't like her anymore today because she's a vicious bitch and a witch. But what I liked about her was she had immaculate style. She knew if this is a black girl. She had immaculate style and she had she really worked on her speech and putting herself together as a package. OK, but it wasn't her brains because there wasn't too much. And it wasn't her beauty, okay? It was the fact that she utilized the power of her pom pom. She utilized and maximized the power of her pom pom. And she, this woman would not sleep. She would not sleep with anyone who did not. You had to run a bank. You had to run an organization. You had to be, you couldn't be less than CEO status. You know, she would not let any man touch her or have sex with her who did not have, who was not like a CEO or president or anyone that ran a major organization. And today, and today, this person is an ambassador at the UN. The power of the pom pom. Now, now, and I, I was like, I'm not playing that game. And I'll, I'll give you my reasons as to why, you know. Um, my reasons as to why I didn't want to play that game is because, you know, when I was in that circle, you know, I was naive about a lot of things. But one of the things for me that I instantly realized, I said, this circle is very small. You see what I'm saying? The circle of power, especially when we're dealing with a city like New York, you know, where all the people in the circles of power, they all have some relationship to New York. And I was very, very, very concerned. You know, this is something I never shared with her. I never shared with anyone. It cost me because I had to keep it to myself. I had to keep these things to myself. But I was very concerned because I said to my, I looked at the, you know, this circle, this circle, and one thing I knew is that they all, no matter where I traveled, no matter where I traveled, because that circle of power is so small, they all had a meeting spot in New York, right? So I said to myself, I said, the last thing I need in a city like New York with these people in the upper echelons of power in this world and in this city is to be known as someone who sleeps around and to sleep around in this circle. And I'll tell you one of the repercussions of this woman using the power of a pom pom. She today is an ambassador, but no one will ever marry her. And that's one of the problems she has, you see? And today, even though she has that position and power and this and that, it comes with a price. None of the men, none of the men that she slept with none of them none of them they all refused to marry her they all refused to marry her why what man is going to want to marry a woman who's sleeping around with everyone in his circle you see what i'm saying it's one thing if you're you know if you're just sleeping around you know if you just you know have lovers here and you lovers there and whatever but they're not all concentrated in your circle. People who you do business with, people who you sit in meetings with, people, you know, you're buying this company and your wife slept with the person whose company you're buying and all her board, all the board members, and it comes with a price. Yes, she got the position. Yes, she ran for president of her country. Yes, she has that title. Yes, she's invited to speak all over the world, but none of the men wants to marry her. Sleep with her? Yes. Marry her? No. And I spoke to her about this before we stopped speaking. I never told them my personal opinions as to why I'm just like, I was like, I don't care how much money you have. I had my own. And it cost me. Believe me, it cost me a lot. And I'll tell you how it cost me. 
when I wouldn't play ball, you know? So beware of, you know, keeping piranhas as friends because, you know, when you keep piranhas as friends, you know, these things happen, right? So what's interesting is that I told her when we were friends a long time ago, I said, listen, I said, look, I said, there are, I said, there are many, many, because I met them. I said, there are many men in your class that you can marry and then still get and aspire to what you want to aspire to. I said, why not, you know, get them, you know, and it wasn't a route that she wanted to go down. Pum pum power. But she got the money. Believe me, she got the money. She got the money. She got the position. She got the power. She has the influence. Okay? In this city. But none of them will marry her. Interesting, right? Whereas, in my instance, here's what she did. Because I refuse to play that kind of ball, because I'm like, I'm looking at these circles, I'm like, these circles are too small to be like messing with. I was like, first of all, these people are too powerful and these circles are too small for me to be messing with these circles like this. You understand? I was like, go out, talk, laugh, drink, have fun. I'll do that. Anything beyond that? No. I said, anything that comes to sexual relationships, it has to be outside of this circle. I said, I'm not getting in that deep. You understand what I'm saying? I said, because you're dealing with people with a lot of power and a lot of money. If things go wrong, these people have the money and the position and the power to erase you from off this planet. You see? And I always had this issue where, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. So this is one of the downsides, right? So the pum pum promotion. So what does she do? You think she was happy that I was in her circle I was meeting the people I was meeting, you know, and I had a great life, it, it, despite the fact that I went through the hell that I went through and still I'm going through and still paying for and blacklisted and dragged through the mud and slandered and all this stuff. Prior to it going on steroids, I had a great, great life. And I'm going to have back my great life again. Um, but this woman also played a role in me getting she was also pivotal in me getting railroaded in this city. Why? Because I wouldn't play ball. I would not play ball with this kind of stuff. And I said, no, not because I'm holier than thou. I'm not going to do it. I just had my reservations about messing around in that kind of manner in these kinds of circles. You know, and at the back of my mind, I would always think at the back of my mind, you know, blackmail. No, seriously, I used to be like, you know, you got to be really careful because these kinds of circles, they use people for blackmail. That's another thing, you know? So that was something that was on my mind. You know what I mean? So I was like, shit, you know, I don't really want to mess with this like this. And let me tell you something. Did I have the opportunity? Should I be in this position that I'm in now? No. No. I had too many offers given to me of whatever I wanted by people who could literally make anything happen. You understand? But I was just like, in the back of my mind, I was always like, if this is not a serious committed relationship, I can't take that risk getting involved with these high profile, powerful people because they don't build their wealth by being nice, friendly people. Ha powerful people have enemies. They build their wealth off of ruthless stuff and they have enemies. And I'm like, if I get involved with this person, this person's not providing me with security 24 seven. You know what I mean? Yes, you'll do this. Yes, you'll do that. But are you gonna provide me with security? You see what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. And these were things, I never shared this with anyone. These were conversations I had with myself because usually women my age, girls my age, and I hung out with all of them, they didn't have these questions. They didn't have these conversations. You understand what I'm saying? I had these conversations in the back of my head like, if I mess with this person, 
you know, could someone come to me and try to blackmail me to get info on them? You see what I'm saying? Could I get hacked, bugged, tracked, used for blackmail or whatever else if I were to, you know, mess with these, you know, these very powerful men? And let me tell you something. I've been around them. Some of them are extremely paranoid. Extremely paranoid. Okay. Extremely paranoid. And I've been and I've I've been at the center of power in this city. I have. It's not even a lie. You know, some of them are extremely paranoid. You know, extremely. You know, so I was just like. If I get involved with these men and it's not, it's not going into a serious relationship, if that relationship is over, okay, what can I lose? Again, pom pom promotions. You know what I mean? Pom pom promotions. You see? Okay, hold on. Let me see, Dennis. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right. But also remember that women know that men are sex-driven. And they use the, pow the power of the pom-pom. And I'll tell you a strategy that I used. <laughs> and I think the strategy backfired on me. But to answer your question, women know that men are sex-driven. So when women are strategizing to get ahead, they're going to use, precisely, they're going to use the power of the pom-pom to get ahead. Men, they don't think, except for the ones in positions of power, the average guy doesn't stop to think, hey, women are really status-driven, okay? They're really status-driven or let's say comfort driven let's put it this way comfort driven what do i mean by comfort driven they want a man to provide doesn't necessarily mean that they won't work or they won't do anything some some their strategy is i want a man to provide so i don't have to work or i don't have to work a nine to five some of them their, their strategy might be i want a man to provide so i don't have to work as hard and then some of them, some of them are like, I want a man to provide so I have a platform to get to where I want to get. I've met all three kinds of women. My mistake was I, I'm so stubborn and hard-headed that I was like, I can do this on my own. Even at the advice, even after being given advice from a very wealthy, very powerful man, he told me, do not go about what you want to do your way. He gave me advice and he said, your best bet is to get married first, then do what you want to do. And I was very young and I was like, nah, I can get it done. And then when the claws came out and then 17 years later, I look back at his advice and I said, this man knew exactly what he was saying and he's 100% right. Get it? So women are very, you're absolutely right. Dennis, women are status driven and they're status driven for three kinds of comfort. It's either comfort so they don't have to work, comfort so they don't have to work as hard or as much, or comfort so that they can, they have the foundation that's set, which is the man, and then they can build what they want to build. So you're at your 100%, 100% right. And make humanity great again. Yes, it, at, in the centers of power, blackmail is huge. And that was something that was always at the back of my mind. So my strategy was this. So look at my friend. My friend's strategy was pom pom promotion, which is I'm getting promoted via the pom pom. And she won. She got it. Now, what was her disadvantages? No one wants to marry her. Whether she lives with that or she doesn't, Lovers she will have, boyfriends she will have, they will never put a ring on her finger. Right? 
But did she achieve the level of success she wanted to achieve? She's an ambassador with the United Nations and she speaks all over the world and respected everywhere where I, where me on the other hand and all the people that know her knows that I was with her. I get dragged through the mud, slandered by the media, um, slandered in the public and all because I didn't use Pum Pum promotion. Now my strategy, <laughs> My strategy was a little bit different. My strategy was to withhold the pom pom. Did it work for me? The only thing, <laughs> the only thing I got left with was self respect because it doesn't work. If you want to succeed in this world and you withhold pom pom, it just it just no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It it just really doesn't. If you wanna achieve jack shit in this world, okay, it really doesn't. If you withhold the pom-pom, you're not getting anywhere. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. If you really want to succeed like that kind of success and you withhold pom-pom, you're not getting anywhere because they will retaliate. I'm just telling you, right? So, okay, so let me see. So any one of you, okay, here's the question now. Any one of you, and some of you answered this question already, um, any one of you ever been in a situation where you saw a pom pom promotion or you've experienced it? Okay, my experience, like I told you, I got dragged. <laughs> so this is why I'm kind of like with the Me Too movement. I understand some of the women. I understand some of the women who got blacklisted, who, you know, got their careers ruined. This is real. When you are close to positions of power, and I'm not saying all people in positions of power are scumbags. I'm just saying it's just the way it is. It's just the way it's structured. You got to remember, women for less than 100 years just started going into the workforce. It's still structurally designed for a specific group of people. Those structures, those 2,000-year structures has not been fully integrated and broken down and reorganized so that, you know, it's like equal and fair and balanced. It's going to take years, men. As bishops, there's going to be sexual abuse harassments for the next 10,000 years, right? So when you go to the, 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 the top, you know, it's, I'm just saying, when you go to the top of the top of the top and you're a woman or you're a gay man, you know, this is something you have to deal with. So back to the Me Too campaign. So I can understand, I can understand with the Me Too society, the isolation, the public humiliation, the character assassination, I get it. But the other dynamic that they refuse to talk about is how many of those women used pom pom promotion because don't get me wrong don't think women in the entertainment industry do not use the strategy of pom pom promotion to get that role in a movie and then because no contracts are signed you can't sign a contract stating that if you sleep with me i'll give you that role it's the assumption that if you sleep with me i'll give you that role when it backfires they cry me too this is not something that's being discussed. You see what I'm saying? So for me, it's kind of like, how many of those women in the Me Too movement really experienced this shit where they withheld their pum pum and got blacklisted or they were violated and then got blacklisted and versus how many of those women used the pum pum promotion strategy, it backfired and then they cried Me Too. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? What do you mean by in this world? Okay, I, yeah, what is the context? Sorry. At, um, uh, sorry, because I, I can't remember what I said. The con, I mean, okay, I get what you're saying. In the current, in the current um, system, in the current system in this world that we live in, exactly, exactly, it, it, it is. It is, and ooh, that's another topic we can go into, but I don't want to do that. Let's F2H, okay, Coley Cole, Coley Cole, Coley Cole. Okay, let, before I get to Kate Spade, let's do a Coley Cole, all right? <laughs> okay, 
It is. Pum Pum Power, it, in the West, they do it more strategy. It's more strategy. But when you're bingo, when you're certain, certain places, it's exactly as you say. There are certain, listen, there are certain herbs, because I'm, I'm Caribbean and I know about these things. There are certain herbs that you can use, just the same as, just the same as, um, what do you call this thing? Um, oh, shoot, for impotence. What do you call this drug for impotence? I forgot, it, I forgot what it's called. Viagra. Ah, thank you, Viagra. Just the same as like Viagra, there are certain herbs and herbs are very powerful. You know, you can ask any alchemist. Herbs are not just used for healing. Herbs, they, they radiate frequencies, okay? Herbs can distort frequencies. They can change frequencies. They can um, attract things, repel things. I mean, herbs are very, very powerful. And there are certain herbal concoctions, herbal combinations that uh, people all over the world and probably in America too, probably among the indigenous in America that you can use like in the United States it's called love spells and love potions and stuff like that. You can use to literally, you just take the herbs, you use it as prescribed and you go out there and then all of a sudden, you know, men are like walking zombies, like, you know, and they'll give you whatever you want. I don't, I don't mess with that because when you turn people into zombies, I don't like violating people's free will. That's just my thing. But, you know, you turn people into zombies and you try to de-zombify them and they're after you like, good luck. That's when they go bonkers. You know what I mean? You know, they do this. They do this in the Caribbean. They do this in Latin America. They do this in um, Viagra. Yeah. They do this in Latin America. They do this all over the world where they take these, they call them love potions in the West, right? Um, I don't know what they call them. I think it's, it's the same in, in, in other parts of the world, but they take these specialized cocktails and herbs and plants and um, uh, Florida water. That's one of the things they use. And they make these powerful love concoctions. Some you bathe with it, some you ingest it, some they put in people's food, some they put inside of the holy grail of pom poms. Some they put, you know, doot, 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 and then it begins to radiate. And then all of a sudden it's like, you have a whole bunch of men like chasing you down the street. I mean, like seriously, that's, I know some women who, I know some women who did that. And I know some women who did that and they, they got very powerful men to give them whatever they wanted, you know? See, I'm, I'm not a dirty, I don't play dirty, you know? I only, I only do like, I was like, you, you're good with me. I'm good with you. You mess with me. I mess with you. You know, if you go low, I will drag you across the floor. Okay. I will not take the high road if you go low. No. You understand what I'm saying? So I also know some women who use some very powerful like herbs and I watch them. I watch them get some very powerful men, but I will not name names. <laughs> I keep secrets. You know, I'm a secret keeper. Um, I will not name names. And I, I saw some women bag some very, I, I'll tell you a story. I had this, um, I had this girl, I knew this girl and she had just um, come from a foreign country and she had absolutely, absolutely no money, no money whatsoever, but she was skilled with those herbs. She was deadly with those herbs literally came to the United States without a cent to her name. But she was deadly with those herbs. And in less than a week, couldn't speak English, had no money, not a cent to her name, okay? And in one week, her apartment was bought, was wearing very expensive designer clothing, okay? Had a car, all expenses paid for in one week. The power of the boom boom. Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay? So think about that.
Okay. So sometimes um make humanity great again. Okay, sometimes when I said when I um when I say in this world, it could mean depending on it's the context. Look at the context because it could have meant in that circle, the circle that I was moving in, or it could mean in the system that that's designed that we live in. So I hope that that answers your question. Yeah, for me, for me, I always wanted to, and this was another thing too, you see, I wasn't ruthless enough to survive in that world, okay? Question. That's, that's the strategy. Okay, let me, that, Dennis, I'm gonna get back to that question. That's a really good question. So for me, personally, I think that um, I wasn't, I wasn't ruthless enough. Okay. I was always like, I was always like, um, I wouldn't do like going and getting herbs and then using it and then tying people up with it. I'm serious. And then tying people up with it and then having them pay for this, pay for that, pay for this, pay for that. Because listen, I, I saw it with my own two eyes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I saw it with my own two eyes and these men would just be like, Shoo. and they'd always tell me, they'd say, Renata, you're not like your friend. <laughs> they would always warn me like, Renata, you're not like your friends. You're a good girl. But I paid for having those friends, didn't I? Now I know better. Okay, so to answer your question, uh, okay, Dennis, the goal is, I think the idea is, I think the idea is to send a rift between human. Okay, let me let me state the question. So Dennis asked, question: Could the Me Too negatively affect the idea of marriage? I think that that's one of the strategies because it's gonna make it's literally stripping men of being a man. No man on the planet, and I'm going to explain what I mean. No man on the planet, when he sees a beautiful woman, can restrain himself. He has to say something. He has to try something. And when I say try something, I don't mean kidnap and rape and sexually assault her. I mean try as in try to get her attention. You see what I'm saying? And some of the allegations, now I'm not talking about real sexual harassment. I'm talking about frivolous claims, okay? Frivolous, frivolous claims like he gave me um, a compliment and I think it's sexual harassment. That's making sexual harassment so open-ended that men are just like, there's this thing called MGTOW, men going their own ways. That's literally going to enter, because men are very practical. Men are very practical. If you're telling a man, giving a woman a compliment is going to land him with a sexual harassment claim, he's going to be like, metal. He's going to be like, women are dangerous. <laughs> he's going to say women are dangerous. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to say, oh, it's not worth it because men are practical. You know, keep it simple. You know, men are practical. Keep it easy. Keep it simple. One step at a time, we'll get it done. You understand what I'm saying? Women are very complicated in that they can multitask and get a hundred things done at once. Men are like, keep it simple, keep it easy, and I'll get it done. If you're going to complicate, and this is what the frivolous aspects not the serious allegations, guys. The frivolous aspects of the Me Too movement, that's why I did this topic today. No one is talking about abuse. Haha, <laughs> if you do, right? Now, if you have a situation where a man can't even with you look, goodness. You know, especially, might I add, Especially, you know, they're putting all this female hormones into the meat, okay? And women are becoming, they're looking like succulent chicken. I mean, that's, that's you know, women are looking like succulent chicken breast, okay? They're looking plump and juicy. And then 
the, the, the fashion designers are making clothing that's like, you know, really showing off those curves. How can you not expect a man to look? You see what I'm saying? Then coupled, this is, this is the psychology. I hope I'm answering your question, Dennis. This is the psychology I don't understand about, you get what I'm saying? So I'm not talking about underage girls now. I'm talking about, I'm talking about women, okay? 21 and older, no underage, you know, women are looking thick and, you know, I'm Caribbean. So I, I like personally for me, I like being skinny, but in the Caribbean, a woman is thick. Her thighs are thick. Her butt is thick. Her skin is thick. This is the standard of beauty thickness, right? So they're putting all these hormones, all these female growth hormones into the food and women, they're looking thick and juicy. They look like a, you know, like a, like a nice ham sandwich, right? Then the designers are making clothing that stick to your thighs like glue. <laughs> look at the psychology, guys. Guys, think about how men feel about this. It's hilarious, you know? The designers, right, are making clothing that sticks to the skin like glue, right? That shows every nook and crook and cranny, right? You know? And then the media, then the media, you know, is telling men, listen, you'd be, you'd get this half naked woman with those thick thighs if you buy this beer. If you drive this car, you're going to get the babes with the nice booty. <laughs> Everyone, we got to like um, make humanity great again uh, comment. He said it's like a torture chamber out here for men. That's the point that I'm getting at. You see what I'm saying? But no one wants to talk about the psychology that it has, the psychological impact that it has on Western men. Let me give you an example. Like when I was in Brazil, right? It's standard. Like Brazilian women, to me, are the most beautiful women on the planet. They take care of their bodies. They take care of their skin. They take care of their hair. You know, they, but not just take care of their bodies. They have the most beautiful bodies on God's green earth. Not only that, they don't just take care of their bodies. They're very much like, like how we, how we used to be in the Caribbean. They take care of their skin. So their skin is spectacular. You know, they take care of their hair. Their hair is, they're beautiful Brazilian women. And in Brazilian culture, when you're beautiful, because when I was there, you know, when I was there, they were like, no, 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 no. You have to, no, you have to wear the, the, the filho dental, which is, you know, the Brazilian string bikini, the, the dental floss bikini. They said, no, 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 you cannot hide this body. No, absolutely not. But it's so normal to see all the women with a perfect body that... I wasn't sexually harassed because everyone looks like me. You see what I'm saying? But in the United States, like in Brazil for Carnival, the woman is naked on the television with some paint on. No one is going to kidnap her and rape her. I'm not saying rape doesn't exist. I'm not saying abuse doesn't exist. It does. What I'm saying is that society is so accustomed to that standard of beauty and it's so commonplace no one really, you walk on the beach and your buns are out because your buns are beautiful. No one, I was on the beach in my dental floss bikini. They were like, oh, she's beautiful. That's it. You see what I'm saying? But you go to the beach in the United States wearing a dental floss bikini. You need armed bodyguards. You see what I'm saying? So that's the difference. So it's kind of like, Okay, so in the United States and in Europe, in Europe, you could also wear, you could also, I lived in Europe as well, you could also wear your dental floss bikini, no one's really going to harass you, that kind of thing, because they're a little bit more liberal when it comes to these things. But in the US, it's different, right? So for men, that's why I'm, I spoke about this, for men, and tell me if I'm talking too long, um, for men in the United States, it's like, it's like, it's like, they're telling you on one end, 
women are beautiful, women's bodies are beautiful. This is the standard of woman that you should have. You know, she's beautiful. And then when the man goes, I agree, she's beautiful. Let me try to get her attention. You slap with a sexual harassment lawsuit. You see what I'm saying? But frivolous, not serious allegations like raping someone, like physically touching someone that doesn't want to be touched, or if the person says no, or if the person says stop, you don't listen. I mean, serious, like, like what's happening to Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman told, this is what he says, he told a couple of women, they were beautiful, they looked good, and they believe that sexual harassment. To answer your question, um, Dennis, yes, because that's what it's looking like. I personally think the long-term strategy, and I'm not going to say this in a race, this is not to be racist, okay? This is a strat. Remember I told you that Pum Pum Promotions is a strategy. Women in the workplace are realizing that Pum Pum Promotion is no longer a viable strategy. They're still not being paid equally. And I mean this for Caucasian women. It's going to take another 50 years to catch up to Black women. And you know how it goes. It's, it's a color-coded structure. OK, don't get offended if I speak about color. It's just the way the system is. OK, um, those who are TIs understand we just get shitted on no matter what our color is. But apart from this in regular society, it is color coded. Laws apply. Laws work differently. Not only is it color coded, it's class coded. If you have money versus if you don't have money, if you have influence and power, versus if you don't. So it's very classist and colorist and all these things, right? I personally think the long-term strategy, and the reason why I say this is because they don't deal with the fact that with pom pom promotions or pay for play, pay for play. I think the long-term strategy of, excuse me, of the Me Too movement is to dismantle the male, the patriarchy in positions of power all across the United States so that women en masse can get the respect, the pay, and the equity that they have been fighting for for the last 60 years. And if it means, it's, it's literally for me, it's like by any means necessary. It's like a Malcolm X strategy. It's like by any means necessary. We're done with the pom-pom power. It doesn't work because we use the pom-pom. You take the pom-pom. We don't get the promotion, right? We, we, we gone to the, the politicians. We fought for equal pay. We fought for this. We fought. We don't get it, right? When we complain about sexual harassment, we don't get it. We don't get um, any sort of restitution. I think the Me Too movement is a strategy to dismantle the patriarchy in all forms, all social activity, whether it's politics, government, business, um, law, uh, education, whatever, using real life grievances, suffrages, real life women's suffrage issues, to dismantle the patriarchy. And if marriage falls as a result of it, if men decide we're not messing with women anymore, they're, they're, those institutions, the relationship between a man and a woman, the institution of marriage is collateral damage. That's what I think. I could be wrong. What does anyone, what does, what is, um, is, does someone have an opinion as to the long-term strategy of the Me Too movement. Okay, so let me look at, there's a, that's what I think. There's another question. Um, there was another really good question. Yeah, that's, that's usually, uh, Coley Cole, that's usually another thing. Are you, Coley Cole, are you in the United States or are you, um, are you in, in JA? And I call J.A. Jandang. Is anybody, are you guys still here? There was another really great question that I, um, I thought that was a really good one. You see, that's a really good, that's a really good, um, that's a really good statement. Uh, make humanity great again. 
said, personal integrity is extremely important. Some things only look good on the surface, so true. If you have to violate yourself to obtain it, it's probably not worth having. You see, the thing is, the thing is, you, because of your standards, think it's violating yourself to get it. I've been around these kinds of women. They don't think it's violating themselves to get it. They think it's a means to an end. That's why I use the word strategy. And this is why I asked, I said, did anyone ever see this happen? What was the fallout when they were working? Or did anyone ever experience when you're busting your ass, you're like, I'm going to get that raise. And just someone just comes in, shwing, uses the pom pom, and there goes your raise. And you're like, okay. And how has it affected you? So that's something. Then the second thing I wanted to talk about, which goes back to the penile power. So we talked about pom pom promotions, right? How women use their 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 pom poms to you know to advance themselves. And I think the Me Too movement is just like look, using our pom pom is not getting us what we want. Marching is not getting us what we want. Petitioning the government is not getting us what we want. We're going to dismantle the whole thing. If marriage falls, if men hate us, you know how women are when they're vindictive. When women are vindictive, they don't care what gets destroyed as long as they get what they want, you know? So it brings us back to penile power. And what's penile power? Just like women use their pum pum as a strategy in this world to get what they want, the power structure in this world is held together by penile power. So the Me Too movement is literally a war of pum pum versus penises. Can you see it? Does anyone else see it? Does anyone type an amen if you see the Me Too movement is literally pum pum power versus penile power. We're going to watch to see who wins. Type amen if you see this. Anybody there? I need you to type an amen if you see this. Let me see this. Then address the subtle mixed signals that are sent between genders when people are exactly, yup, yep, 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 yep. That is so true, Dennis. You see, that's what I was talking about. Before I go on to penile power, sorry, I just got your question. You see, this Me Too is becoming so frivolous and the lines of sexual harassment is becoming so blurred. It's becoming so blurred. It's moved from unwanted, um, unwanted compliments, unwanted uh, verbal, verbal language, like unwanted attention. To now, if a man says, "You look Morgan Freeman," if a man says, "This is what he alleges took place," if a man says, "My God, you you look, you're beautiful." I've been sexually harassed because I didn't want him to tell me I was beautiful. It's like, you see? So that's why I'm like, I think, I personally think it's to dismantle the me. I, I think the Me Too movement, the long-term strategy is to dismantle the patriarchy. I just think it is. I think these very powerful women, or maybe it's men behind it, who knows? very powerful women or men, whoever's behind it, I think they're like, it's time to dismantle the patriarchy. And by dismantling the patriarchy, they are going to castrate Western men. They are going to castrate Western men. Because now, if you tell a woman she's attractive, you can get slapped with a sexual harassment lawsuit. That's how open-ended the allegations are becoming, you know? So I hope I answered that. Uh, I hope I act and answered that. Exactly. And when you dismantle, because it's going to, for me, it's going to castrate men if, it, if the accusations become so frivolous that you blur the lines between a compliment and sexual harassment, men are, you know men, men are going to be like... <laughs> 
you know, men are going to be like, I'm not even, I am not even looking at you women because I don't want to go to jail. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying, right? <laughs> you know, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Harry M. Harry M says, okay, so we have people that are leaving the chat, but I'm like, whatever. Harry M just said, the men allow themselves to get into a bad situation with pum pum power. The pum pum is like a crab claw. It will hurt you someday. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. If a woman doesn't exude some kind of femininity and some kind of feminine sexual energy, right? How are men and women supposed to get into relationships? Seriously. The, the, the female lioness gives off pheromones, very powerful pheromones. The male lions fight each other over the right to mate with the female, right? And it's the same thing with male-female relationships, okay? So it's like if a woman doesn't um, exude some kind of femininity so that men can be attracted to them. How are we going to have relationships? How are we going to have, how are we even going to start relationships if men who are already intimidated by beautiful women, now they're like, I'm going to be slapped with a sexual harassment lawsuit if, if I even look at her. You understand? How are we going to have relationships? So this is where, this is where this, um, this is where this kind of like the line gets really, really blurred, you know? So I don't know. I hope, I, I don't know. What's your take, Harry? Okay. So I think the long-term strategy of the Me Too movement is multifaceted. Okay. One aspect is to, let me read that again. So make humanity great again says, I think the long-term strategy of the Me Too movement is multifaceted. One aspect is to take down men who are a threat. That's a good one. That's a good one even if just potentially, to a certain stratum of power occupied by men. I think that is, that's spot on. That's spot on. Men who are a threat to what? Men who are a threat to people's finances or men who pose a threat to people who want a hostile take over what they own. Because what I find interesting about the Me Too campaign is that it's only dealing with celebrities and people who wield some sort of power. It doesn't deal with the fact that we in the average public, okay, we the average public, average men and women deal with this every day. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, you know, is it for hostile takeover and you're using it as a strategy to remove the person? You know what I mean? So some of those things that I wonder, and then a certain stratum of power. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with the second part, which is to dismantle that patriarchy. Right. So the second point is the penal power. Some call it, some call it the boys club. Okay. The boys club. Now I'm not a man and I cannot speak for men and I don't know the male experience. Okay. But penal power, let's go into penal power so we understand the strategy of pom pom power. Now, I don't know all the strategies of pom pom power. I'm quite sure you guys have some stories to tell. I'm just telling you from the reference point of me. Penal power. Penal power is that boys club that holds this whole world and every structure and every organization on this planet together. It's penal power that runs the Vatican. It's penal power that runs banking. It's penal power that runs finance. It's penal power that runs the law. It's penal power that runs religion, Vatican, non-Vatican, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, all the major religions on the planet. It's run by penal power. It's penal power that runs um, employment. Most of the uh, corporations, in fact, probably 99% of the corporations on the planet are run by penal power, which is the boys club. 
Um, it's penal power that runs trade. It's penal power that governs international relations. A place, a place that is liberal as the UN doesn't have a secretary general that's a woman. It's penal power that runs this world, except for, you know, you have Angela Merkel in Germany and you have the Queen of England, who's probably the only female that's at the head of that. Um, I don't want to say the Queen and penal power in the same sentence, but that's probably what it is. You know what I mean? So the penal power structure that runs this damn planet. Okay. So that's the issue. And this is why I think that the Me Too movement is coming in there and dismantling all of this, right? So Wichita Mountain said, exactly. I think the Me Too movement is meant to shut down a lot. I think so. That's precisely what I think. Alliances between men and women. Yep. And to reduce the number of offspring. I didn't think about that. To dehumanize people by, sorry, to, uh, da, 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 and to reduce the number of offspring, to dehumanize people by refusing them their natural desires. And I agree with that. And I think the natural desires of being together, complementing each other, we're not talking about violent sexual assault and all the repercussions that comes with that. We're talking about when two people find each other attractive or when one person finds the other person attractive and what type of um what type of schemes the person may come up with to get the other person to like them back or find them attractive this is making those lines so blurred and i have to agree with that um let's see okay it's rampant in civil service now. Okay, stop paying it. Okay, so Dennis says it's rampant in civil service now. Stop paying attention to the fourth grade written newspaper. <laughs> okay, Dennis, you have to clar uh, clarify that a little bit. Um, pum Pum Power is rampant in civil service, or um, what's you're saying that the level of uh, clarify that statement just a little bit more. Okay. Perhaps you may recall the queen who runs the world precisely. That's why I said she's one of the very few, the queen and Angela Merkel, uh, two of the females that are at the head of that penal power structure, but there are only two. It's, it's, there's only two. I mean, and the, the president of Argentina, you know, um, very few women, very, very few women are really at, at the, the helm of that power structure, right? Um, Okay, yeah, exactly. Okay, boom, boom, power, got it. So you're saying that it's rampant in, yeah, it's going to be rampant in, yeah, anywhere where it's institutionally, and I don't say this to degrade men. I am not a male basher. I am not an anti-patriarchy um, feminist. I am not a feminist, okay? I am feminine, not feminist, okay? Um, I, I personally... If I am in a relationship with a man, I want to cook for you and I want to clean for you and I want to go shopping for you. These are things I just like doing. Okay. Um, so that I don't have a problem with. Um, I am not a feminist. I'm just, I'm feminine, not feminist. Okay. But I can have a temper when I'm ready. Okay. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, definitely pom pom power is, is it's wreaking havoc but we've shifted we've shifted from pom pom power it's all our war it's it's pom pom power versus penal power via the me too movement let's see what comes about our, and i think i think when the dust settles i think women are going to get higher pay that's my long-term my long-term strategy women are going to get higher pay right so we see i agree wichita mountain that's another aspect to destabilize society and make it easier to control precisely. Okay, so let's move on to another topic. Someone asked me about Kate Spade. Now, okay, so now new topic, new topic. I'm going to type it in, new topic. Okay, Kate Spade. And what do I think? Okay, so Kate Spade. I read the article. Um, I'm in New York, and here's what I will say. I read the article and the article said that she left a letter to her 13-year-old 
to her 13 year old daughter. The article stated that she committed suicide by hanging herself with a scarf on a doorknob and um, here's what I think. First, it's very sad if in fact she did commit suicide. I'm going to preface my language very carefully because this is New York and it took place in New York and these are very powerful people. For me, I just need to understand the laws of physics. For me, I need to understand the laws of physics. What doorknob is so strong that it can hold up a body or mass that's at least a thousand times its weight? That part I just don't understand. Uh, the second thing for me is I am not, I'm not speculating about anything. I just don't understand how a doorknob, which half of which is literally away from the surface area, okay, away from the, the main area that has a force against it, because the doorknob is literally jutting out. How does it hold that much weight without it breaking apart or sound? And then her husband was in another room. So these are, not only that, there were two other celebrities who died in a sim in a similar fashion. Dave, three other celebrities. Loren Scott, who was also a designer, she died in the same manner. I think that was last year. Um, uh, David Carradine also died in a similar fashion in Bangkok, in Thailand. And then this comedian, Mr. Doubt, Mrs. Doubtfire. I forgot his name. I always forget his name. Um, Mrs. Who who did Mrs. Doubtfire again? The comedian. I forgot his name. So, I just I just think it's um it's unfortunate. Um, if anyone is struggling with mental issues, do not keep it to yourself. Whether you Robin Williams, thank you. Right. So, if anyone is struggling with mental issues, don't keep it to yourself. Speak to someone. You have nothing to lose. No one gives a shit what anyone has to say about you publicly. Um, I just find it a little bit difficult to understand. Not that I want to know. I don't. But how does a doorknob support that much weight without the whole door breaking apart? So I just, I just, it just doesn't make sense to me. So that's all I'm saying. And it's ironic because... Loren Scott, her name is, I'm going to type her name in so you guys can look it up. Um, you know, Loren Scott, oh, I'm typing, my typing is just like, Loren Scott was another one who was found like this, David Carradine, I hope I spelled his name right, and Robin Williams. Um, these three, and someone mentioned there were like three others that died in, a, in the exact same way. So these three people all died in this manner, okay? And, and then um, Kate Spade, so that's four. Four that died with this, this same hanging method with a scarf, and three of them died in the exact same manner with, with the doorknob scarf thingy, you know? So... I don't know. I just find it just really, really, really strong. That's the only thing I could say about that. Let's see where it goes. They're, they're, they're saying that it was a suicide. That's the only thing I could say about that, right? Exactly. The body will unconsciously fight death. So, you know, I don't think she would do that to her child. And then, you know, people are talking about this, this suicide letter where she made an exclamation point telling her child, ask daddy i'm like what the it's so open-ended you know it's so open-ended the last um the last quote where she said it's not your fault ask daddy so it sounds like ask dad and he'll tell you that mommy was going through something but the way it's open-ended you know some people are saying it's like ask daddy because he knows what took place 
it's it's really strange that that um suicide letter you know so again i just think the suicide letter is strange i just think you know you committing suicide with your husband in the same apartment is strange and you know you like from a door and they, they don't hear no one hears anything um, it reminds me of the of the one that took place two weeks ago with the black lady who lived on Park Avenue, I think it was Park Avenue or Fifth Avenue, who jumped out again, this wealthy black lady who jumped out of her apartment building with her child and she was going through um, a struggling marriage and she grabbed her child and leapt out of the window. This was another one. I think this took place like two weeks ago in New York. It made the news. So here's my question. Here's my question. My question is, people die every day, and people die horrifically every day. I just find it rather strange that some people die and end up on the news, and some people die, and no one gives a shit. But people die, never forget, guys, people die every day. So why is it some deaths make the news? And there were many celebrities. And some say, oh, because there were celebrities. What about, what about the celebrities who died and they never made the news? You know? So this is something that, you know, I'm kind of like, eh. You know? So, yeah, she hanged herself. Yep, she allegedly hanged herself. They're ruling it a suicide. I just don't, I just don't understand how this happened, you know? Um, and it's kind of like, hang from a doorknob a door a doorknob is gonna break you know so exactly exactly i dennis i absolutely agree so this is why i'm, I'm just being very um very wise with my words you know exactly so, yeah, Marilyn, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is, you know, this is what they're saying. But I wanted to do something. So if anyone has any questions, I wanted to do one final one final um, piece. It's already 128. How about a hook to hang your robe on? I don't get it. T-Burger, I don't get it. Yeah, as in Kate Spade in fashion, yeah. Yeah, make humanity great again. Kate Spade from fashion with the bags and the shoes and stuff like that. She hanged herself yesterday. We 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 won't know. And now it's coming out that she had problems in her marriage, like serious problems. So her husband was looking for a new apartment. And then this, Chris Cornell, that's the other one. Chris Cornell was another one, another hanging another hanging that um yeah so you have Lorenz Scott, David Carradine, Robin Williams, Kate Spade, Chris Cornell. Yep, yep, Chris Cornell and there's another two. There's two more. I remember two more who died by that hanging that hanging method. Chris Cornell was another one, yeah. That's another one. So the last topic is already 129. We're going to make this so long, right? Okay, so the last topic is dealing with what I call It's dealing with what I call post-traumatic targeting disorder, PTTD, post-traumatic targeting disorder. What is post-traumatic targeting disorder? Post-traumatic targeting disorder is when the, the effects, let me start over, is the psychological, emotional, and mental effects of people who are targeted by unseen forces, whether it's people, um, whether it's people you know, I'm sorry, or people that you don't know, who target you via slander campaign, via um, blacklisting, via um, character assassination, bribery, Directed energy weapons, 
the feeling of being zapped, directed energy weapons, um, gang stalking, uh, workplace mobbing, um, spy campaigns where they spy on you and they report back everything you do or being trafficked through technology. And technology meaning your cell phone, your computers, um, internet, laptops, or, and finally, implants, right? So we're gonna get a little bit more, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make this long because it's already an hour and 31 minutes. Okay, so what are some of the, what are some of the effects? And I'd like you guys to type in below some of the effects of post-traumatic targeting syndrome. Because post-traumatic targeting syndrome is real. It's real. Some of the effects are mental fog, mental fatigue, the inability to make sound decisions, the inability to make long-term relationships with people and have long lasting relationships with people because of suspicions, um, isolation, withdrawal, absolutely. Thank you, Wichita Mountain, withdrawal, learned helplessness, Wichita Mountain, again, that's an excellent one. Um, Berger says, I have PTSD, but didn't know that was a classification. PTSD, PTSD, I made up, I made up post-traumatic targeting disorder because of the fact that the state refuses to recognize the targeting program. Maybe they will now with the Me Too movement. And a lot of people who have PTSD are just being um, are just being um, labeled nuts because they can't identify where the stress is coming from. So I reclassify the name just for people who understand it because of the targeting program to specify targeting like post traumatic stress disorder. I call it post traumatic targeting disorder. So I made it up. So someone said, okay, 15 years, right? Fear, fear is a very good one. Fear is a very good one. Yeah, burger. Yeah, that's why I called it. No, so PTTD was made up by me specifically for people who are or were or being targeted, right? Because a lot of times they will deny you PTSD and label you delusional because they refuse to accept or you cannot trace the source of the stress. So a psychiatrist, because they can't trace the source of the stress, is not going to say you have PTSD. They're going to say that you're delusional. So I called it PTTD because of the targeting program. I hope that, I hope that answers the question. So some of the some of the um, types of trauma and some of the types of precisely some of the types of trauma and some of the types of stresses that a person encounters when you have PTTD and I don't say this as a psychiatrist because I'm not um, but people who are in the targeting program do have and exhibit certain types of behaviors as a result of the targeting program. So some said, let's go back. Some said um, withdrawal, learned helplessness, that those two are the best. Those two are absolutely the best. Um, fear, that's another one. I say isolation where you begin to isolate, well, that's withdrawal. Um, I see mental confusion, mental confusion, okay? 
because I notice that a lot of TIs cannot make sound decisions. And I'm not sure if that is a result of um, the program or if it's um, being in the program or if that's, um, if that's something that came prior. But I've noticed that a lot of TIs cannot make sound decision. There's an inability to think practically. And that's why I started making these videos. Like some TIs tell me, oh, you need to do a video on more of how the program works. I said, I already know how it works. I've been through this mess for 17 years. You've been through this mess for however, however long. I said, what you need to know is you need to know practical steps that you could take day by day so that you can have some resemblance of a life. You see what I'm saying? You already know what you've been through. I've already know what I've been through, but you need to have some resemblance of a life. Okay. Burger, that feeling of vibration when you sleep, that's from the directed energy weapons. Or if you're implanted, when they turn up the implants, whether it's implants, nanotech, wearable devices, is when they turn it up so high that your body begins to reverberate and vibrate. So it's one out of two sources. But we're going back to, we're going back to the resulting implications of when you've been in this program. Why? Because we have to talk about coping mechanisms. Okay, how can people cope what they can do daily confusion, which it amount in mental confusion, mental fog, mental fog. And I realize this is something that is very crucial when a person is in flight or fight or freeze mode for too long. Their ability to make sound decisions become skewed. And it allows the perps, it allows the perps to influence you to make decisions that are not good for you long term. Or influence you to say things and do things that will not benefit you. Another thing that I've noticed, paranoia. That's a big one. Paranoia. Paranoia and inability to trust. These are two of the big ones behind withdrawal and learned helplessness. Paranoia, brain fog. That's a good one. The inability to trust. You're paranoid about everyone and everything. And what happens is the paranoia, because you're in fight, flight, or freeze mode, and I'm not saying this as a psychiatrist, I'm saying this because I've been there. When you're in stages of fight, flight, or freeze constantly, you begin to question everyone's motives around you, and you're not supposed to be living like that. And what ends up happening is that normal people who are going about their lives, living their lives, who just come in proximity of you, you automatically think they're a perp. Okay. And these are this is part of the program, part of especially stage three and stage four, where they want to immediately classify you as a nutcase. Part three and part four, phase, sorry, phase three, phase four, this is the favorite of phase three and phase four. When you begin to believe everyone is out to get you, boom, it makes it easy for them to classify you as a nut. See? So the inability to make sound decisions, the paranoia, the paranoia where you think everyone around you is out to get you. This is part of the post-traumatic targeting syndrome. 
everyone is out to get you. And then as a result, you cannot make sound decisions when you think everyone is out to get you. The problem is when you're a real victim of this program, and this is what I've encountered multiple times, multiple times. When people meet me who don't know me, they love me. And I give them about a week before these snakes get to them. And I can always tell when the snakes have gotten to them because they literally do a 180 on me. They love me. They're like, we're not you're so this and we love you and da 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 and I always lay back and I sit back and I said, let me give these snakes about a couple of days. And for sure, I give them a couple of days and I go back and literally the people change. And that's when I know the snakes have gotten to them. So that's another one. So the paranoia and the inability to make, to make serious decisions, right? Okay, let's see. Yeah, Marilyn, you, Marilyn mentioned, whenever I post on the TI comments, someone brings it back up on my phone with a thumbs up, like weeks later. That could be the AI, especially if you have um, this technology inside of you, that could be the AI. And I'll say this, I can have a thought. Listen, a thought, okay, okay? a thought. Not say a word, not tell anyone. And I go online and the thought is a commercial. That's how bad it is for me. The thought is a commercial because I have wearable devices inside of me and nanotech and wireless body area networks. So that could be the AI. It could be a perp. But the whole, whole point is there's two ways. If it's the AI, more than likely they're using you to test predictive technology. Sorry. More than likely, they're using you to test predictive artificial technology. If it's not the AI, the perp, right? So, so that's that's something. Yeah, yeah. More than likely, Ti Burger, uh, T Burger, sorry, said I feel they are trying to destroy my twenty-eight year relationship without giving too much information. Do you want to talk about it? If you want to talk about it, maybe we can help you give you some advice on how to keep your relationship. Because one of the things they really succeeded in doing to me was destroying my relationships. Okay. And my relationships, I read my relationship and the people that I was around and they really worked over time to destroy those relationships. So if you want to talk about it, without saying too much, that's too private, but write it and I'm gonna share it and we're gonna ask people how, what strategies they used. Don't give too much personal information when live. We're gonna ask people what strategies they use when they're suffering with PTTD, okay? We need, we need language for us um, in terms of their relationship. So, T Burger, don't give too much personal information, but just enough where people can give you feedback as to how they deal with stuff. So go ahead. Um, I'm only going to be here on here about 10 more minutes. It's really long, this video, right? Okay. Yep. Asked Hubby if he was CIA. Oh, wow. Okay. So wait, someone asked your husband if he was working for the CIA or asked your husband if you asked Hubby if he was CIA. Clarify. Okay. Yes. Okay. So Marilyn says, yes, I have to. Yeah. Yep. 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 Marilyn says that when she's out, she ignores, ignores, ignores. It works like a charm. If you want to keep your sanity, you got to anything to take your mind out of, out of the fight or flight mode. This is really good, Marilyn. To take your mind out of the fight, flight or freeze mode, anything that does not pose a threat to you or anything that you instinctively do not feel is a threat. Ignore. Ignore. Okay? Anything that does not pose an immediate threat to you or you don't instinctively feel is a threat, ignore. 
right? And that's one of the ways you maintain your peace, you maintain your sanity, because I go out every day, everyone knows who I am. I get mock scoff, laughed at, scorned, dragged through the mud. I get it all the time, every day, nonstop. And I have to ignore 90% of it because my peace, my sanity, and my stability depends on that, right? So Marilyn, that is a very good cope uh, tactic. Don't look around when out shopping, etc. Have to keep balance. The most important thing, like unfortunately, Janet Murray last month committed suicide, okay? And the most disgusting thing happened after Janet Murray, who's been in this for 50-something years when she committed suicide, a disgusting, creepy perp wrote under, when the, when the news came out that she committed suicide, this disgusting, creepy creature wrote, um, aren't we all glad she's gone? Like, are you serious? Your sanity. You have to reverse the fight, flight, and fear mode. You have to do your best to reverse flight, fight, and fear. Because if you are triggering off one of the things that really helped me, I'm going to tell you this video. It's called neuro, um, Neurobiology, the study of trauma and the brain. This was my saving grace. A video on neurobiology, the study of trauma and the brain. And how trauma shuts down portions of the brain and takes over portions of the brain. And if the person is functioning using a certain part of the brain, the they call it the primal brain or the, the animal brain, it's instinctual, okay? What tends to happen is that the part of the brain that controls human behavior gets overridden it overrides the control mechanism because of trauma and repeated trauma it overrides the control mechanism the the part of the brain that controls your emotions it gets overridden by the primal brain and when the primal brain takes over the frontal part of the brain the person has less or is less likely to control their behavior. This is why I'm telling you. So any one of you, go on YouTube, okay? I'm going to type this up and type in Okay, neurobiology, the study of trauma and the impact on the brain, it will help you because it will help you to see patterns of behavior and what they're trying to do to you because it's to drive you. It's a driving mechanism, you know, the fight, the flight or freeze, except for the freeze part. It's a driving mechanism where it drives you into doing things that you would not normally do. This is why I wanted to talk about post-traumatic targeting syndrome, because they get you to do things you don't want to do, say things you don't want to say, okay, or inhibit you from doing things that you should do, okay? Remember I said the inability to make decisions the inability to think clearly. This is why we're talking about this, right? Okay, so Marilyn. Okay. Okay, Berger, Berger said that this started happening to him since he started posting on YouTube. Um, if you want to go into that. Oh, okay. So what you're dealing with, Berger, is, um, is, is paid trolls. And paid trolls are just as bad as, as, as perps. They're just as, just as bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. So 
um, Make Humanity Great Again asked, what do the snakes do to get your new acquaintances to turn against you? So basically, what, what I've dis one of the things I've discovered is that they literally go and they lie to them. Like they meet me, they, they oh, Renata, you're wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And then when I meet them, it's the same lies they've been telling for like 10,000 years. So that's what I've noticed, you know? So like, it's a, so they go to them and whisper campaigns, slander campaigns. And then of course, when they slander, it's like, who is this person, you know? And then the, the next thing is they might bring them onto the network that they have spying on me. So that's the third thing that they do. So, so to answer your question, that's what they do. But let's stay on topic. Let's stay on topic with some of the behaviors that a person exhibits when they have post-traumatic targeting disorder, right? Okay. Yeah, you know what? The only thing I could tell you is um, if you could cover them in rubber, rubber helps. Like anything that's like heavy rubber. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but there's nothing else you can do, you know? Um, yeah, you're in phase one, you're in phase two, you're in phase two burger. When your, when your friends stop believing you, you're in phase two. Um, here's what you can do. If you can use a language they'll understand because your issue is they harassed you when you were online. Talk to them about online trolling. Online trolling is a serious problem. You know, like this is why I don't have arguments online. The moment they start, the moment I post something online and I see that the person is a troll, I delete the comment because I will not get into an argument online because I know, I know a lot of them are paid trolls and perps and harassers. Okay, so the moment I see that they come online and I know that they're coming to start a fight, I just go delete, you know, so no, no, no. What I'm saying is you said it started from online, but a lot of the perps are online and perps are trolls. Okay, perps are trolls. Perps are on trolls are online perps. When the trolls are not online, they're perps in real life. When the perps are online, they're trolls. There's no differentiation. There's no, there's no differentiation, you know? Um, okay, please tell me about. Okay, Marilyn, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Please tell me about. Okay, so let's see. All right, so some of the issues um, we dealt with, we dealt with some of the, um, the isolation Oh, wow. That could also mean, T-Burger, that can also mean that your computer is hacked and you were being spied on. Did you ever make, um, did you ever, are you, you know, are you, I don't want to ask you those questions like this, live like this. Um, send me a private message in, in YouTube. Oh, guys, by the way, YouTube is getting rid of their private messaging because they say people don't use it. And I'm like, People only discovered you had private messages. Why are you giving it up? Advertise and let them know they have private messaging. You know, I don't want to say that on here, um, but it's m burger more than likely. Um, that's the directed energy weapons coming through your computers. Um, more than likely you were being monitored. Okay. And if you were being monitored, there's some questions I'm going to ask you, but not like this. Right, because I want to respect your um, your respect your privacy. But guys, perps when perps are online, they're trolls. When trolls are offline, they're perps. Okay, so don't think there's a difference between a troll and a perp. No, they're the same group of nasties. When they're online, they're trolls. When they're offline, they're perps. Same nasties, right? Exactly. Ignore. Maintaining, maintaining peace. The other thing you can do that's good is if you do things like yoga, exercising, meditation, listening to like um, Fibonacci frequencies, you know, that helps. Um, 
exercising, walking, walking helps, a good coping mechanism when you're dealing with high stress. One of the things I learned, and I learned this from, um, I learned this from very, from, you know, some wealthy people who dealt with a lot of stress. You know, one of the things they would do is they would get a venting room and they would just walk and vent, you know. So that's something that works for me when you're dealing with high stress. I walk and vent. I don't have a venting room, you know, but, you know, to deal to deal with a lot of mental stress or physical stress. What I do is I take a walk and I pretend I pretend like the person who pissed me off is standing in front of me. Let them have it. And you would not believe, you are not going to believe how, how much of an excellent coping mechanism venting is, you know? So that's one of the coping mechanisms that I use, you know, like, you know, you know, I'm not wealthy and I don't have a venting room where I can go in like soundproofing room and you go and you blah, and no one hears you. I don't have that. So what do I do? I go for a walk and I vet. You're dealing with hackers, burger. That's why I said, you know, you could message me privately and I, yeah, you're dealing with hackers. That means you were hacked. And by the way, the FBI said about four days ago that hackers have broken into millions of routers and to reset your router and to get a new password for your router. Okay. So more than likely you were hacked. That's why. And they're, they're doing it through your Wi-Fi. And if you call your Wi-Fi company and you tell them they're hacked, they're going to tell you there's no way it's possible. And I'm telling you, the FBI just put out an article four days ago stating that Wi-Fi routers have been hacked. Okay? You're dealing with hackers. Burger. And they're going to troll you online. And they're going to do this. See, Burger, see my last video. That's going to explain to you what's going on. It's called technological trafficking. See the last video. Yeah. The physical zapping started because we were hacked. Because I go through that through my computer, through my cell phone. They've toned it down through my cell phone. They've toned it down now. But some of the things that would happen is when I turn on my phone, they would literally try to hook up the internet on my phone to the implants in my body and then start zapping. Okay. So I understand, right? And they kill, yeah, you're dealing with hackers. Exactly. So that's good. Um, Burger, what you're probably going to need is you're going to need um, audits done. You're going to need to get, um, oh, shoot, I can't even think of this. You're going to need to, for someone who knows how to do forensic work on your computer, you know, for you to get audits done of your internet and your computer and all these things, and they'll be able to identify who they are. But that's going to cost you. That's probably going to cost you like two grand. I'm just telling you. That's how you deal with that. You're going to have to get audits done because they're hacking into your phone and they're using directed energy weapons to assault you. There's also a guy online who was a computer uh, technician. He was an IT specialist and he, he became a, a target. And he was able to backdoor into him and find them on his computer and find the modality, his videos on YouTube, and show how they were using directed energy weapons through his computer. So, yes, they can. Yes, they do. But you can also find out who's doing it. But you're going to have to pay about $2,000 to get it done. All right? So that's a good one. So walking. Yep. And healing frequencies. Okay, so Marilyn, that sounds like um, nanotech. You know, um, you might want to do things like um, bentonite clay if you haven't done it already. Uh, what do you call this? Um, I forgot this black thing, what it's called. I forgot what it's called. I'm going to have to, when I remember, I'm going to let you know. Exactly. You you get it, ma uh, make humanity great again. Yeah. Yeah. The router, because I'm telling you. Yep. The FBI finally came out and said they're hacking routers. And I called my cable company. I called my Wi-Fi company and I told them and they told me, no, there's no way it's coming from the Wi-Fi. 
this was two years I've been calling them to tell them about this. And the FBI just said it. They said, absolutely, yes. They're hacking Wi-Fi. Yeah. Can you imagine? Right. Okay. So I think we covered everything. It's two hours. Okay, guys. So let me get going. So I want to tell you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. For those of you who came late, I am so sorry. I need to break up this video, right? Um, thank you for joining me. And... I don't know if I'm going to make another video at the end of the week, but it was fun today. Okay, I'll think of another really great topic and uh, I'll come back and I'll do another one. Is there anything you want to ask me before I go? You're welcome, Wichita. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> okay, yeah, just private message me on YouTube. And I'll, I'll explain to you. I don't want to do that here. Right? So, Wichita, thank you. You're welcome. Guys, thank you so much. Is there anything you want to ask me before I go? Love you, baby. Take care of yourself. And, guys, if it's not, think about it this way. If it's not directly impacting your safety, do not fight, do not run, and do not freeze. Because you don't want your brain you got to go look at those videos of neurobiology and trauma on the brain and what it does. Remember, we're dealing with people who understand these the, the science of the brain. Okay? We don't. They do. They understand these things of trauma. They understand how it impacts the brain. Another thing about trauma is that the brain, and this is why many of you are stuck in fight, flight, and freeze. This is something they know, but we didn't know. And this, it wasn't religion. It wasn't prayer. It wasn't any of the other modalities that I did. This is what broke my brain out of it. I'm a, I have a long way to go. What I learned when I studied those videos on neurobiology and the brain was that trauma on the brain does not get erased until the issue is fixed. The brain, even if it's a hundred years ago, recognizes the trauma and the, the neurons in the brain processes it as a trauma until it's corrected. This is why I don't forgive. Get it? This is why I do not forgive people who do wrong to me. I don't. Because it doesn't change the, 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 the neurons firing off in the brain, it doesn't correct it. The brain still recognizes it as trauma until a corrective action is made that erases the trauma. And then the brain forms new um, neurological pathways to override the trauma. Guys, study those videos on YouTube neurobiology and trauma on the brain, okay? And as I'm talking to you, I literally feel that um, like there's a ramp up of directed energy weapons as I'm speaking to you right now. Literally, I feel it in the atmosphere and I wasn't having that before, okay? So I need to go do some clearing and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And yes, Dennis, I think most of this is louche. I personally think Mozart.